this is like a high lumens light bulb, self ballasted fluorescent light. This is uh, supposed to be 1700 lumens. It's kind of for, I've used in one of my little overhead lights on the desk, not on this desk, but on the other desk. And it's actually pretty bright, but you can see what happened. This, uh, it actually happened a few minutes ago. The lamp just kind of went up. It had been uh, failing prior to this for quite a while and she went to turn it on and turned it on and kind of left it there for a second and I guess these just overheated and they were already probably damaged or but you can see them bulged out here in the end they just gave up completely um, so I'm gonna see if I can get this light to just light back up I'm just really curious um, to see if we can just replace those and get this to light back up real quick either it will light up or it'll just blow these capacitors as well I don't have exactly this value though uh, it wants 15 microfarad at 200 volts and I don't have one that's 200 volts I just realized that that wanted 200 volts and not I, fi I assumed it was gonna be like 150 or 160 but this does have a little transformer here so I'm afraid that this might step up the voltage slightly to supply something closer to 200 volts if that is the case definitely it would blow these in no time what I'll do is actually just clip a couple of um, capacitors in that are larger values and we'll see if we can't get that to work with something larger we'll go with uh, let's see Let's just hit them with 450 volters. <laughs> this is really just a throwaway video anyway. The one thing I do need to uh, keep straight here is uh, the orientation. So um, both of our negatives are, are facing that direction. Okay. Oh, that one's loose. That one's loose. May want to resolder that in. It actually looks like these two are in series. They are in series. So, in actuality, this is this is pumping up the the power handling. They're doing that to pump up the power handling. Double that to about 400. Um So I could probably just use one of these. Could probably use one of these because that's exactly what they've got here. Let me make sure that's why what I'm looking at is correct. Okay, so they've got these two in the middle. Let me uh, zoom in. Let me zoom you in so you can see what I'm looking at. So you see right there on the board. You see down in there where they've got. See where they've got the little schematic symbols. Okay, so this is the negative end down here. So you've got a negative end here, and in the middle, those two are connected, and then you've got the positive end would be over here for the for the battery uh, of of uh, capacitors essentially. So I could just use one single 450 volt capacitor. Um, 15 microfarad is what this called for, but I'm thinking I can get away with just one of these 22s. Let me go ahead and uh, 
yeah let's get this back together and then we'll just try it I mean really it's just an experiment anyway who cares okay so we'll I kind of damaged it when I got it apart I wasn't uh, expecting to be able to get it back together or, or even try really These were just uh, coiled around these little terminals. They weren't soldered on. I'm presuming that they do that um, for the ease of manufacturing and not necessarily for um, any kind of engineering reason. This is really sloppy. If I was trying to do this and save this, you know, I would I would take much more time with this but I don't really care <laughs> all right so that's all sort of back together so I am going to try it with just one 22 microfarad at 450 volt capacitor here we'll just clip it in and see what happens so this was the negative end make sure those two in the middle are not touching this should be the uh, one to the sleeve and this would be the one to the uh, to the hot all right so here we are hooked up let's uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna try dialing this up first nothing Okay, that wasn't drawing anything at all. I want to see if I'm getting anything to this point. Make sure my cord that I chose is okay. That cord might be bad. It does have a piece of tape right there, and I'm not sure what's under the tape. It's just an old cord that I grabbed out of the drawer. Okay, yeah, I'm getting voltage. We're clamped onto everything securely here. Yeah, it looks like we are. So something else, something else definitely failed besides just those capacitors on this um, it could be because like I said that there were some connections that I uh, had to reflow the solder to them so they definitely needed to be reflowed but this you know it wouldn't I, honestly it wouldn't surprise me because of how hot this got oh oh that's rocking back and forth quite a bit that little transformer I would not have expected that to rock like that oh okay yeah see that see the transformer in this this little I don't know I don't know if it's a choke I'm not sure but see there how much that's rocking that tells me that probably is a uh, either a bad solder joint or something something's definitely not right with it I wouldn't think it would be rocking back and forth like that yeah when this thing blew up when those blew their tops uh, it spewed all kinds of nastiness into the room I could actually I looked over at the lamp and that that stuff was spewing out of the top of the lamp but yeah I don't uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to do anything with this obviously it was just an experiment to see if we could get it to light back up if we replaced the uh, capacitors that were blown but apparently not yeah I mean you know I can understand the if um, if a light bulb has genuine improved efficiency, longevity, um, luminosity, all the things that you want light bulbs to have improvements in. I can understand replacing them with uh, 
fl compact fluorescents or with LEDs or whatever. But the failures of these sorts of light bulbs, as opposed to the the old style um, filament incandescent bulbs, uh, there's just a lot more here that can go wrong on one of these. You know, there's a lot in here, and it it costs a lot more to manufacture something like this. There's more to it. Um, and you know, and obviously that helps the light bulb manufacturers in the long run because if they can if they can charge you more for bulbs, they're gonna. You know what I mean? So anyway. Yep, more e waste. And this one unfortunately contains mercury, so this has to be e wasted in a response in a responsible manner. So we will attempt to do that. Okay, so I've opened this back up because I was just really curious. The it's not a transformer that's here. That is a ballast transform or not a transformer, but um, it's like a little ballast coil. It's a choke, more or less. Uh, but there's only one winding in it. It looks like, and it's open. And it's no surprise that it's open because of the way that it's moving around on the board like that. And I think it's moving around because one of the wires got hot and probably desoldered itself up in here or broke up in here somehow. Um, but if I try to test it, if we look at where it's coming down to the board here. Alright, right there. Um, it's reading reading open it's open so that coil is the failure on this and of course other things failed too but that coil right there is what uh, is causing it not to come back up I mean that's a shame because see this part of the bowl would still be usable it would be neat it would be neat um, or I guess I, I should say it would have been neat if um, they were still making these like they used to. They do make these for some uh, like photography applications or video applications where you need um, a, a bit of a smoother, uh, not uh, less flicker than an LED. And these kind of fit the bill for a lot of those sorts of applications uh, because they provide more of a steady glow. Um, so you know they do still have applications for this sort of bulb and it would just be nice if they would make these in two parts where you know they would have a socket with all of this crap in it and then this, this socket could be replaced and this could all be saved why wouldn't you do that you know what I mean anyway what do I know right what <laughs> I'm no expert here but it seems like if the government actually gave a damn uh, you know about their stated uh, goals like the EPA for instance in the environment they would mandate that sort of thing would they not they would mandate that bulbs be sold in two parts uh, ballast part and this part so that you had actually multiple things that you could replace so you keep some of these around and you keep some of these around and these you don't replace quite as often as you do these right because um, this is probably a lot less uh, harmful to the, to the environment, the stuff that's on this, just this part part right here. Um, throwing that away is probably less harmful than getting rid of this. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, again, what do I know? But that'll do it for this one. Just a quickie. Uh, thought you guys might enjoy. Hit subscribe down below if you did. And for now, we'll see y'all later.